We need to fully grout this floor and get this preparated. That's not even a word. So that we can fill in our bottom row of our wall tile. And then for the very bottom, I haven't decided yet when these side tiles meet the floor. That's where the bathtub is gonna be. So I might do a dark color silicone instead of a white silicone bead. There's gonna be a baseboard here. So I haven't got that far yet. If I'm gonna use this color silicone bead around there, that obviously back wall you wouldn't even notice, but I'm thinking more on these lines here and here when I lay in those final tiles. Now the other option for this area that is gonna be underneath the baseboards, if you're worried about grout crackage or movement and you'd rather have a little wiggle room, you could just go ahead and use a bead of silicone all the way down that edge and then put your baseboards in place. So there would be a little flexibility in the edges there. I'll leave that up to you or not. And once again, I wanted to show you the tile up close in the daylight. It has a kind of a slat gray look to it, but in Lowe's, it actually looks like it's completely black, which I wasn't a big fan of, but I thought would do. But then after looking at it in a different light, because the light at Lowe's kind of plays around with the eyeballs a little bit, in the daylight, this is exactly what I wanted the type of tile in this color it has a little washed, kind of a stone washed, really dark gray black tones to it but in certain lights does look black, but under my light in my conditions of my house, I really, really like it. And if you are wondering how many tiles I used again for a length about nine feet, five inches in length by width five feet to three inches, I used 17 and a half boxes, a lot more than anticipated. I'm glad I picked up a couple extra when I was at the store last time. I got four left in my box 18, my 18th box right here. So again, 17 and a half boxes. There obviously is gonna be a lot of side cuts for all your side cuts against the edge of the walls. And unfortunately, I can't really use these any other places. So I'll keep the four spare tiles. God forbid I crack any tiles or anything like that. But again, all these side pieces are just too thin. You can make some sort of project out of it or just recycle them. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have officially shop vac everything. We have washed it down. And when I'm talking about washing, I mean just a bucket of water, hot water in my case, and then just wrung it out really good and so it's nice and damp. I don't want water getting inside my grooves, inside my grout lines, because then it's gonna take longer to dry before I do start grouting. I do have like one spot right there still remaining to dry, and so I'm gonna leave it probably for another 10, 15 more minutes. This is high altitude Colorado, so things dry out really quickly around here. But here's another tip for you here, especially because this is the floor. This is a lot different if it was walls, but floor, I don't wanna drag in construction junk. There's a lot of dust and debris through this area right here before you step into the bathroom. So I need to take a shop vac and I'm going to clean this area up here. And then also I'm probably honestly going to step into the tile with my socks on without my shoes as well. Because again, I don't want to mix up my grout. Obviously I'm going to work from that end of the bathroom pulling back this way, but I want to keep it clean as I pull back this way as well. And what's nice about giving it a nice go over is number one, you're getting rid of all the thin set that's accumulated in the edges that you missed before. But then also I did see a couple grout lines where the thin set was a little boogerish, which I missed the first go around because again, we want really nice grout lines, clean and clear, free of boogers and thin set so that we can get some good grout established in those lines. Folks, we're going to be right back to the grouting video, but I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Manscaped. Obviously, Manscaped is most known for their lawnmower body hair trimmers, but they're coming out with a lot more products, not to mention their beard hedger. I use this all the time, especially before church for quick cleanups on my neckline, my beard, just looking a little less scruffy. I live in Colorado. Scruffy beards are a thing here, but I like to keep mine clean, short, and trimmed up, just personally myself. Now, before we do get into their products, if you want to get 20% off and free shipping on whatever Manscaped offers, use my direct link in the description box below of this video. Click on that link and it will automatically apply 20% off and free shipping for you for whatever you purchase. Also, don't forget about their Weed Whacker 2.0 for your ears and your nose. Definitely don't be that guy driving to work, plucking those bad boys out. Their other products, which are very high end, they're ultra 
premium collection, which includes deodorant, body wash, body spray, shampoo and conditioner two-in-one, lip balm, and I use their body wash now every single shower. Love it. Comes in this cool little steel aluminum pump bottle. It's vegan, dye-free, gluten-free, paraben-free, alcohol-free, cruelty-free. I love their deodorant as well. Definitely start using better products for yourself and for your skin. This deodorant is dermatologist tested, aluminum-free, vegan, paraben-free, dye-free, and cruelty-free. Definitely don't be using the cheaper, junkier stuff. There's too much cancer stuff in the products we use, and I like how this is aluminum-free. So once again, if you want to get your hands on the Ultra Premium Collection or your Beard Hedger or your Lawnmower 4.0 and getting 20% off and free shipping, use my drink direct link once again top link in the description box below of this video for that 20% off and free shipping. Once again thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the grouting video because who doesn't love to learn about grouting and grout and master the craftsmanship of a remodel bathroom. Okay this is the grout I'm going to be using right here. Now this is a Lowe's brand Mappy. I believe you pronounce it probably not but a little definitely warning if you are not super experienced with grout, they also make another one that has sealer in it, but it's a fast setting grout. You got to be careful with it. You got to wash it off after you grout it in the appropriate time. You could ruin your tiles with the like discoloration. That's why I went with this one for the floor. This is just the Caracolor S. I believe the S stands for sanded. Don't quote me on that one. And then I got this one right here the Caracolor U unsanded grout for my walls. So again, walls, and this is gonna be for my floor. Again, this is like, they do once again make a different one, kind of a more of a higher tier. It's more expensive because it has sealer in there already, but do be careful with that one if you go with that one. That's why I again went with this one. So we're gonna follow the directions. Now, I am not gonna mix up this entire bag because my floor is not gonna need 25 pounds of grout. This one comes in a 10 pound bag right here. This is what Home Depot sells right here, and I don't think I'm actually gonna wind up using this after all, just because this one has definitely some directions where you gotta really get after it fast. So there's some reviews about this one on YouTube, and again, the only reason I picked this up was because the color, but this one is like almost identical to low 00 white compared to 381 white, bright white. So I think I'm just gonna use this for all three instead of the wavy accent in the back because this one is super DIY friendly, plenty of working time. So I think I'm gonna, again, go all three walls with that. I'll show you a couple of tips on this one. Again, I'm not gonna use the full bag, but pay attention, read the directions, but the reason I'm even going over this is because there's a step right here where they show a power mixer, and this is where you wanna be very careful. We're gonna get it to a nice consistency, and I'll show you that, but the mixing part is where you have to be very careful and use a, a slow mixer. If you're gonna use your drill, which I'm gonna use, with the mixing attachment, I'm gonna put it on a low setting and I'm gonna mix it. It says right here, for three to five minutes, I'll probably mix it for four minutes, and then you let it sit for five minutes, and then you remix it for a minute or two. I'll probably do a minute and a half, just kind of like, you know, go the in-between times on all these. And then of course, we'll be showing you more tips as we go along, but go slow. Some directions even state to hand mix it, and I don't know about hand mixing it, that's for sure. Just put it again on the slow mode. This is the Kella Color S Black, and so it doesn't set up too quickly on us. We are gonna be actually using some colder water, and it says right here, you need it between 50 and 100 degrees, obviously way less than that. So I'm gonna be using kind of room temperature cooler water for the application of this. Typically with my thin set for my tiling, I would mix it with about maybe 60 to 70 degree water. Again, it all depends on if you use hot water and if it's hot in your house, it's gonna set up quicker. So you might wanna turn down your heat in your house and use cold, cooler water for a more workable time if you're a slow worker, which I am a slow worker. But grouting this entire bathroom floor should only take about 15 minutes, 20 minutes absolute max. And if it takes me 20 minutes max, by the time I get to this area right here, I'm gonna give it enough time 
before I do my first wash. Again, we're gonna be doing two washes and we'll go into more specifics on that in just a little bit. All right, this is my grout float I picked up. And if you don't have a big box store, again, I just got this at Lowe's. I'll have the tools I use in the description box below of my videos. Sometimes it's just easier buying things on Amazon, to be honest with you, instead of spending an hour, hour and a half, drive time, shop time. You guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway. They call this one an epoxy float. You can use like a rubber float. It just kind of depends on what you like personally. This one is a really nice flat surface. We got a nice little square on that end and then a rounded edge on this end. Some people like the rounded edges over there on that side. If they are gonna grout joints, as in corner joints connecting to the back wall, which I will not, and we'll talk about that more in the video. The reason why is because the industry standard, most people do not grout ceiling joints and they just use the color matching silicone instead. And so that's what I'm actually gonna do. I'm gonna stay away from the edges all around the edges. I'm not going to grout the very edge and the very edge over here. Everything else will get grout, of course, all this. So some will get in that line like right here, but I won't do that portion of the tile. So again, all these lines, there's gonna be a little grout that gathers in this area right here, probably half inch over each side. That's okay, no harm, no foul. And then for my walls, I'm not gonna grout that edge where these tiles connect to the back wall and I'm not gonna grout the very top. I'm gonna be using silicone for all the top connecting to the ceiling areas and where these tiles eventually will score into the floor portion as well. Okay, again, I'm only mixing up half the bag here. So I got a 16 ounce glass poured in two of those to equal 32 ounces total for mixing half the bag. Directions state they want two quarts for the whole bag. One quart is 32 ounces. So again, two 16 ounces in the bucket. Looking good. Again, put your water in first. Now we're going to grab our bag, go outside with a respirator on, mix it outside at least until... It's really creamy where it's not putting up any dust. And then we'll come back in the house because it is 40 degrees outside with 15 mile an hour winds. So I'd rather not sit out there for four minutes and mix. All right, let's take a look at my bucket here. We got a nice chunky cookie dough consistency here, which in the perfect world, I actually would like it a little bit thinner than this. And I mixed it up for the full five minutes as required. I probably should have added maybe just like an ounce or two of water before I fully committed to it, but I think this is gonna be just fine. The extra two minutes after a five minute sit time right now, which I'm waiting on the timer to go off on five minute wait time. And then I'm gonna mix it up for the full two minutes. And let me show you kind of the speed I'm going on. I probably could have used a little quicker. So I was going like probably about maybe that at the most. I think you could probably go up to something more around like maybe this right here. Uh, definitely don't do anything crazy like that because what that's gonna do is that's gonna add more air to the mixture and then it's gonna set up super fast on you. And then once we are done mixing for the full two minutes after sit time, five minutes, make sure you clean your tools off, put that bad boy in water, let it loosen and then clean it later on because we're gonna get right to grouting. So during this five minute wait time, go to the bathroom, make a cup of coffee. There's my timer. So let's go ahead and start our two minutes. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you here since we're right here with you. Now, I might have to up my torque on my drill a little bit, but again, you can do this by hand with a margin trowel. Just might take you a little bit more effort. Okay, I'm gonna up my uh, clutch so it doesn't get stuck and go ahead and finish this up. All right, we're gonna start in this corner over here and I took off my shoes just in case. Don't wanna get any grubby mubby in here. All right, then we're gonna simply just reach into our bucket with our grout float. And again, this is gonna be a little bit thicker than I'd like to have it, but because of the shape of these hexagon tiles, I'm gonna work in small sections. So I'm just gonna go from here. And if you really want to, you can try to go ahead and get it in all the grooves like this, but this is that's just gonna kinda of take a while. And I might have to with it this thick. Again, a little Little bit thinner than this but I think it's gonna work out just nicely here so that's gonna take you a little bit of time to do it this way here and people do do that if it's a little bit thinner then what you do 
is then again start below. If you're starting on your wall, start low and go high, and then just go straight over it. That's for a pass number one. But I think due to the thickness of this, I might just have to work quickly and get it in those grooves. And right off the top of my head, I might have, should have mixed up the whole 25 pound bag for this floor, but don't quote me on that one. And so again, first off, it doesn't have to be super pretty. We're gonna get it. And if you can get a nice, there we go. If you can get a nice little rhythm to it, then you're gonna go up like that. And then how we get off the excess, okay, there we go. So whatever way is easier for you, you can either go with the line, lengthwise of the line. Again, that's just for getting it on there, filling it in, and then let me work quickly. Okay, so once you get a section, you're ready to kind of move on to the next section. Let me go ahead and put this down over here. We're gonna go ahead and take our grout float, and we're gonna work it at a 45 degree angle. So we're gonna keep our float up about like this, and then we're gonna go ahead and work our way this way. And again, if you do forget one line, like I just did right there, because what we don't wanna do, these hexagon tiles, it's a little different than like flat tiles, but we're trying not to remove the grout out of it. And then this corner over here, again, we're gonna come down. Some of these angles are a little tough, so start there and then come this way. And obviously we have way too much grout on here, and that's where our washing is gonna come into play. And again, no harm, no foul, if we did get grout in that back line, which we didn't really want to, because we're gonna be using silicone. But let's remove all this. I'm actually going back over this part and removing a little bit of a top layer, so that's just less sponge time. So as you can see here is where I originally was just wiping from. And so it actually kind of dries on the surface, which that's why we want to wash it off. So it's going to look super, I mean, try to obviously get up as much excess as you can with that 45 degree sweep. And then either swipe it back in your bucket or take it from that location and then place it in another crack area. And again, don't work slow, but that's what I like about this one. Then they're more high-end one with the sealer, a little bit more work time. I put my furnace down to 62. The cold water should help. And let's go ahead and just keep going. All right, ladies and gentlemen, half bucket worked. My only advice would be make it more fluid than that. Consistency I showed you. This is how much I have left, and I shouldn't really be touching this because there's cancerous stuff in there, but um, that is very, very slightly moist, and sorry, my hands are filthy. I'm going to fill this bucket with water so it doesn't dry out on me, and then have to throw the bucket away. Wash your tool before you get started on the washing. Wash this, or it will harden and go bad. Okay, so that up there has definitely had a half an hour, and by the time I clean that and work my way back here, we will be fine here. I will, of course, be cleaning up this, and that was just kind of overflow from that. So as you can see here, it started to dry out a little bit, still a little bit moist, spreadable, but on the very tail end, don't let it get like that. Again, a lot easier to spread when there's a little bit more water than I showed you. Okay, so as you can see here, a lot of haze, but we go underneath and there is our tile color right under there. And the grout lines will actually look a little thicker, especially if you have, you have these hexagon tiles. The reason being is because it's kind of gone up over the edge of the tile, but don't worry, we're gonna wash that down. So. That's why I didn't want to use the whole bag because try to put a little bit of this in like a Ziploc bag to keep it moist because after we wash it, if we do have any spots we missed, we're gonna go ahead and just wipe it in with our thumb and then come back and clean it off like we see here. So go ahead and take a nice little clump, put it in a plastic bag, wash your tool, and let's get to our wash number one. Okay, I got some warm water. I got a nice sponge. I switched over that sponge to this sponge. That sponge is flaking. So if you have a flaking sponge, go get yourself a nice new sponge. All right, so as you can see here, I'm wringing the water out of it. It's a damp sponge, but there's not a lot of water in here at all. Use two hands and get all the excess water out. We don't want water sitting in our grout line. So again, this is just damp now. No drops coming out of it at all. And we're gonna keep the sponge moving on the grout lines. We're gonna do the similar process, 45 degree angles like this, because they're hexagon tiles, I'm gonna kind of do some circles, but not really because the grout lines are kind of circles. So I'm gonna like go against the grout lines. But if you have long tiles, let's say something like this, 
Then you want to go this way. Just keep the sponge moving so water doesn't get into the grout lines. Too much water will soak up and strip away the color from the grout. This is going to be our first wash. Let's go. Okay, if you do have a helper, definitely cycle out your water. Because this color is black, this is turning super the sponge and then the water is just disgusting. So anyway, let me show you a little tip here. So I think the camera can pick this up. Hold on one second. And this is turning out beautifully. Let's go ahead and see if we can, here, let me cut this light. So here's a good tip here. Let me see which one that is, that one right there. Okay, so again, damp sponge. And because of the consistency, there's just more to wipe off. I'm noticing that circles, even going over the ground line, it's okay because it actually kind of softens it up a little bit, but don't stay in there too long because then you're going to be stripping out the grout out of there. So don't go with the lines, go kind of in circles and then see how that one is just beautiful now. And then see this one's all messed up and goobered. So again, we go around it. And then if you have like some chunks, like this is a pretty big chunk right here. So. Then we get close to the grout line without going in the grout line. See how that's making it real nice right there? And then again, any touch-ups, remember we do have our Ziploc bag. So let's go around this one, get in the center, got a little edge right there. Again, I'm not putting too much pressure because of the hexagon tiles. Now for our next go washing, we're going to be very light. So don't dig, 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 but just keep the sponge moving, making sure you get those big chunks out and any dark spots, and then give it a rinse, and then get up at a 45 degree angle. Again, larger tiles like I have on my walls, it's gonna be much easier to grout and clean. So let's press on. I'm gonna have to cycle out my water here in just a little bit. Now you will notice still, there's still a haze on some of these tiles that are drying. So that's why we need to cycle out our water because our water is pretty dirty and our washing and buffing is gonna help this out in the long run. Good thing I saved a little bit of grout. I missed about one inch right there for some oddball reason. Didn't see it. And so again, if I didn't make myself clear, let me move this bucket, hopefully that's not in your way. And definitely don't spill your bucket of water on your tile. So do be careful moving that around. Knee pads will be your friend. So. Hopefully the camera can pick this up. I got too much grout right in the middle here, here, and this line is all messed up right here. So again, just keeping it moving, and then just slightly. I'm gonna go right at it, but not much at all. And again, when I go at it, if it's on the middle, you can put some elbow grease in there, no problem at all. But what we don't wanna do is get too aggressive and take the grout out of the line. So I have some grout here and some right on the edge. Now, if you do miss some of this for some oddball reason, in the first wash and second wash, you can fix small overlaps where you think the grout is a little too thick. And for some reason you missed it, you can buff that out the next day. And then what I like to do after that, especially if it's a lot, then I go at it just one pass through, rinse, and that sets up a better clean surface for my second wash, which we're pretty gonna pretty much do that identical scenario. And again, this also is softening up those lines as well, because we've all seen tile jobs where it just looks way too gritty if you stare at it too close. This is turning out real nice. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the first wash is now complete took a lot longer than expected. That's why definitely use the DIY friendly grout and not the professional one, unless you are tip top, just you have more time to work with it. So here, let me go ahead and turn on my light here and you can see a little bit better here. So as we can see here, this is where I just finished up right here. We have a little bit of hazing. Obviously on camera, it looks a lot worse than it is, but again, that's just one layer of hazing, which we're gonna do it now a second wash. And this is where we need a clean sponge and clean water. We're gonna be going at a 45 degree angle, doesn't matter which way we're going, but we're literally going to use the clean side swipe down a few feet, flip it over, swipe down a few feet, and rinse it again. 
Your hands are gonna get pruney, but this is the way we're gonna get rid of that top layer of haze and then come back tomorrow with some shop towels, microfiber rags, and we will buff the remaining haze out if there is any. So let's get some clean water and begin. All right, I almost got ahead of myself. I just finished the first wash, but before we do move on to the next step, I'm gonna go through with my headlamp and look for any discrepancies, especially that one inch spot over there. I'm gonna take my Ziploc bag full of grout. And also, if you had thinner grout that wasn't too cookie dough consistency, look for air bubbles that have popped up or separated. Fill them in with your finger with a grout in your Ziploc bag. Again, any discrepancies. I have one little area here, which I'm gonna fix. Let me show you this. This was the only chip I had on one of the tiles. It's very slight, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of grout on there, wipe it down so the grout stays, and that's how you fix a little side chip. I'm probably gonna do that to some of this edge ones here as well, or use some black caulk, and we'll fill that in when I put my Schluter edge up against this here. Let's go ahead and do that. And then after you do that, you can wipe it off right away. So the whole job is up to the current job. And then we'll go into the next step. Okay, now unfortunately in my Ziploc bag, it dried out on me. So this is why you don't wanna use the entire bag for your little blemishes. And let me show you the consistency here. And so this is a great way to do it. Again, just a little bit of water and like a throwaway tray right here. I'm only gonna use like an eighth of this, but I do need to mix it for another minute right now and then fix those discrepancies. And also one quick thing, the grout probably would be a little bit more darker, more like true black as stated, but due to my consistency that I did make the grout, I think I had to scrub it a little bit more than anticipated, which might have stripped out a little bit of the color. But again, it's matching these tiles here. So I think it looks really good, but do not pour any of this stuff even your water when you're rinsing it, don't pour it down your drain because there's sediment in there that's gonna get caught in your pee trap. And so I'll pour the water out tomorrow, bag up big chunks, put that in a bag, throw it away. Okay, again, sponges ring out, start 45 degree angle, boom, flip it over, clean side, boom, rinse it. Same thing, run your toilet flange, and again, a couple feet, and again, the thinner you have your grout, you're gonna have to worry about bringing more up. When it was as thick as mine, sure, there's probably more washing that I need to do, but that grout is almost cured. So again, if you do see any discrepancies, go ahead and address it right now. A couple feet. And the reason, again, you do it with the 45 degree angle is because you're trying not to take more grout out of your lines. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after the second wash, besides a little footprint right there, <laughs> it looks absolutely fantastic. Now, of course, there's still a little bit of haze in some places, like let's go ahead and look at like a little line right there of haze, obviously kind of like a little bit right here as well, but we are looking absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. The light in this camera with the uh, white balance doesn't do it justice. It looks almost like a little bit silver-ish, more on this camera filming it. But with the naked eye, it's kind of a deep gunmetal gray. I wouldn't really call that black, but it's looking really good. I'm very happy with it. And tomorrow we're gonna get in here and we're gonna buff the remainder of the haze off the tile and then we are going to be grout sealing it with a bottle grout sealer. All right, it's the next day now, and we are looking absolutely fantastic. We will be buffing this out here in just a little bit, but in the meantime, and when I mean buffing, we're gonna be using some shop towels, grab some old rags, and we're just gonna wax on, wax off in circular motion and buff out any remaining haze, which there's not much there, but there is a light bit of dust in some hexagon tiles. Now. Most professionals wait 48 to 72 hours before sealing. That's why if you know what you're doing and you're a very quick worker, you can use the grout with the sealer in it. But if this is your first tile job, you have a large space, you're not gonna wash it off, you don't wanna stain your tile. So do be careful once again with that. That is the only downside to sealing tile is we're gonna have to wait 
48 hours before I do seal it to make it waterproof. In the meantime, I will finish up this tiling on my lower sections here. I will grout these walls here, which you're definitely gonna wanna be subscribed to because I will be using an unsanded grout, different color, and we will be using silicone once again in the corners. So there are some things in this bathroom that I can do while I do wait for the downtime of the grout to fully cure. Alrighty, sports fans, we're looking good. We got our shop rags right here. Heavy duty, lint free. I'll have these linked in the description box below. You can use old clothing rags if you want as well. And what we're gonna do in this circumstance is we're literally just gonna be buffing out the tiles for any remaining haze. So here's a great example right here, as we can see haze right here. So we're gonna take our, just our dry shop rag. You can use the blue ones if you want as well. And again, we're just gonna go in a circular motion and we're gonna buff that out looking real good right there. And as you can see here, you're gonna get some dust right there. So unfortunately, we're gonna blow through quite a few rags because what we don't wanna do is buff dirty rags on clean tiles or vice versa, you guys understand. So anyway, next tile, switch over sides. And if you're feeling frisky and you don't get too much haze on it, then go to the next one. I, I think I'm ac actually put gloves on for maybe better grip. This Colorado weather destroys my hands, especially the thin set mortar and grout. It kind of stained my hands. So. We're gonna do that to the entire bathroom. Alrighty, a little tip for you here so you don't use a bunch of them. Pull out two if you get this one or two blue shop towels. Fold them in squares, dehaze until it gets dirty, flip it over, unfold it, use all the different sides until every single square on both sides folded and unfolded. And we did a great job right there. Floor is looking stellar. Also, you're gonna save a lot of haze cleaning time by using my sponge technique that I showed you in the video. Two washes will eliminate a lot of excess buffing for that haze. And again, with this light shining down on the tile, it makes it look more gray grout instead of black. But when I have the flash off of this and the upper light off as well, it looks more deep gunmetal gray and black. But once again, if you want to keep the full color, dilute the consistency of your grout more than I showed you in the video for easier spreading on and wiping off, I had to work the grout joints a little bit more and that caused a little bit of that black grout color to be removed using a little bit too much cleaning with water. Okay, buffing's done. Now we need to wait an additional day. Make a long story short, I actually didn't get to the buffing portion until today, which was was a day later than I was supposed to the next day, if that makes any sense. Because I cleaned it so well with my sponge, there wasn't too much, I wasn't too concerned about it. But the quicker you get to it the next day after you grout, the better. So we have one more additional day. So tomorrow I will be grout sealing. And if you need to do your silicone, go ahead and do your silicone on the same day. I'm not too concerned with it. While I wait this extra day, I'm actually gonna silicone right now because it has already been two days since I grouted. I'm just gonna give it the extra one more day for the sealer. Anywho, so I'm gonna go ahead and use silicone all the way around the base like we already discussed. Obviously not here because that's where my transition strip's gonna go, but all the way down the line. And then after I clean that up, then I'm gonna start on the remainder tile job going down to the floor. Then we'll seal the floor tomorrow. Then I'll get to grouting the walls and sealing that. And we're on the tail end of this job. Don't let the party stop, guys. Hit one of these videos, continue to watch, and we'll see you soon.